Hi, this is Elia Fishman, and welcome to the July 2019 CTSS quiz. Now, for many people, the new year begins January 1st, but when you're in academics, it begins July 1st. We lost all of our fellows and got a whole bunch of new fellows. Everything starts again. So we welcome the new fellows, and we finally said goodbye last week to our old fellows. Okay, with that, let's get started. Ten terrific cases. This patient had uh, hepatitis C and right upper quadrant pain. When you look at the liver, you see the cirrhotic liver. Then you see multiple masses and multiple vascular pools, which actually represent a combination of AV shunting, tumor neovascularity, and active bleed. Well, cirrhotic liver, without even looking hard, you go to hepatoma, which is in fact the right answer. This is not the appearance of FNH. This is not a hemangioma. Hemangiomas have peripheral puddling. AV malformations are usually small, or if they're large, you see the AV shunt, but not multiple vascular lesions like this within a very large mass. A very interesting case. This patient had back pain. What's the diagnosis? Two examples of cinematic rendering beautifully showing the one on the right, the uh, black blood appearance on CT. You can see the aortic valve. You can see the dissection beginning above the valve, extending up into the uh, arch. A beautiful example of a type A dissection. We're looking at how we can use this black blood appearance for looking inside vessels and what other information potentially we can gain. The most likely diagnosis in this case is, when you look at the... Uh, what is actually a, basically almost a venous phase image. There's a two centimeter mass in the uh, body of the pancreas, which you can see on the cinematic rendering, which is more arterial phase. The mass is particularly bright on the cinematic, well-defined and a classic cinematic appearance of a neuroendocrine tumor. Neuroendocrine tumors are typically hypervascular, but not always. They can be somewhat cystic, can have some rim enhancement, but typically the smaller ones Solid, hypervascular, and very well-defined, as this case was. This patient had a neck mass. What's the best diagnosis? Two cinematic renderings. Beautiful example. Image on your left. Look at the vessels being pushed by the large thyroid gland. That's the thyroid. And you can see when I cut through it, beautifully the cystic components, particularly on the left side of the gland, this is a classic goiter. It's not a carcinoma of the, uh, like a squamous cell. It's not a thymoma. It's not lymphoma. This is a goiter and that cystic appearance inside the goiter very nicely seen and a good feel for how cinematic rendering could really be used for preoperative planning as well as for uh, defining extent of disease. This patient has hematuria, what's the best diagnosis? Well, you can see the patient has a hypodense lesion, wedge-shaped, sharply marginated right kidney. And if you look at the right renal artery, the branch that goes to the posterior part of the kidney, look at the axial image, you can see it's occluded. This is a classic renal infarct due to an embolism to a renal artery branch. Now, sometimes, only looking at the axial, you could say, well, infarct versus polynephritis. You're not going to confuse this with tumor. And sometimes I agree, infarcts and um, pilo can look the same or similar in part. Pilo is more likely to have stranding around the kidney. And a key finding for infarcts is seeing the thrombos vessel, which we can see nicely in this example. This patient had GI bleed, and when you look at the images, there's a vascular lesion or a high-density lesion in the patient's uh, pelvis adjacent to the ileum. And I've never seen lymphoma be this dense, and I've never seen adenoma be this high density, or even melanoma. Now, I guess we don't know what the lesion looked like without contrast, how vascular it is, but a vascular lesion arising near the small bowel Yes, you could think of a carcinoid tumor, but there's no desmoplastic reaction. What you could think about is a GIST tumor. GIST tumors are commonly exophytic, particularly in the stomach, but also small bowel. They can be very vascular. And this was an amazing GIST tumor that was hypervascular. This patient had a left nephrectomy, and we're doing a routine follow-up study. And when you look, the patient has a one centimeter nodule adjacent to or involving 
the left psoas muscle. And someone suggested that this could be an accessory spleen, which could fall backwards in a patient with a left nephrectomy, but it's not enhancing like the spleen. It's a solid lesion against and involving the psoas, and it's a recurrent renal cell carcinoma. About 10 minutes ago, I read another case that looked very similar. So recurrences in or near the renal bed and renal cell carcinoma, particularly clear cell, need not be very large. They could be one centimeter, and it's the vascularity of the lesion that helps you find the lesion. This patient had a cystic lesion by the tail of the pancreas, and I have to admit, what could it be? It's could be middle-aged female, could be an MCN, mucinous cystic neoplasm, but they're usually in the body. It could be an IPMN, that's a possibility. Could be a cystic neuroendocrine tumor, but those usually have an enhancing rim. That cystic is not going to be lymphoma. This ended up being an oligocystic, serous cyst adenoma. So again, serous cyst adenomas have a range of appearances, and at times they will fool you because they're just simply large cysts look like IPMNs, more common in the head of the pancreas, but can occur anywhere. Now in this case, this, what is the mass? There's a mass in the head of the pancreas. It pushes and maybe scallops the portal vein and SMV, but it's not invading. The hepatic artery is stretched over the mass. The mass appears to be cystic and solid with the cystic components best defined on the coronal volume rendered images. Well, this doesn't have the appearance of a neuroendocrine tumor, too cystic for most lymphomas, not a great location for MCN, but the scalloping, the appearance, is really good for serous cyst adenoma. And this is another example of serous cyst adenoma to make the point that serous cyst adenomas are not always typical in location or appearance. Now, in this case, this is fairly easy. I just like this case because I wanted to remind you about giving oral contrast, be it positive or water. There's a mass, low density in the stomach. You can see the coronal view, how it hangs down. That's not an adenoma. It's not a carcinoid tumor, which would be vascular. It's not a pancreatic rest, which is smaller and vascular. This is a classic gist tumor. And yes, it's not very vascular. That's good for gist tumors. Um, again, uh, most just tumors in the stomach, 70% are exophytic, but they can be intraluminal, and this is a very nice intraluminal example. Well, those are 10 cases, and I hope you liked those cases. I hope you got them all right, but even if you didn't get them all right, I hope you learned something. And even if you got them all right, I hope you learned something. And with that, see you later, alligator. Bye. If you liked what you heard here today, please make sure to hit that subscribe button and visit our website, ctss.com, for lectures, quizzes, pearls, and more. Also, be sure to check out our apps that are available for free on the Apple Store. All links are in the description box below.